Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Human Behavior Podcast. Did you know that mastering the art of small talk could change your life? Join us for a fascinating journey into the world of effective communication and information gathering, where Greg and I bring our contrasting styles to the forefront. From hostage negotiations to courtroom dramas, you'll discover how leveraging the power of small talk can transform your communication skills. During the episode, we explain the power of building trust through common ground as we share valuable lessons learned from personal experiences and family anecdotes. Whether it's identifying key decision makers, balancing confidence with authenticity, or engaging in casual conversation about shared interests, you'll learn how these vital skills can make social interactions safer and more meaningful. Finally, we offer practical strategies for navigating social interactions with humor and authenticity. From the importance of situational awareness in everyday conversations to advanced techniques for de-escalation in high-stress environments, our insights are both relatable and actionable. Through real-life examples, you'll gain a deeper understanding of how to read a room, engage others effectively, and build rapport. Tune in to enhance your ability to connect, gather valuable information, and create positive human connections in every interaction. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and please check out our Patreon channel where we have a lot more content as well as subscriber-only episodes of the show. Enjoy the podcast. We kindly ask that you leave us a review, and more importantly, please share it with a friend. Thank you for your time, and don't forget that training changes behavior. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, hopping on with us, and, and good morning, Greg. Uh, today, we are getting into uh, a little bit about communication and kind of information gathering and uh, how we do that, but the big thing I wanted to get into with this episode is is for those of you who don't know um, and haven't met like us in person or anything, uh, you know, Greg, one of the things that you always do is you you talk to everyone I and mean, like everywhere we go, you're always striking up conversations with people or getting into stuff or asking questions about things. And part of it's just yeah. your, your personality and you're extremely outgoing and everything like that. But, you know, and what we glean from that is what I've found is that we often get little nuggets of information that yeah. end up being useful. It's almost like, uh, uh, what was that in Wayne's world where I was like, man, I'm glad I met that guy or something like that. Or, <laughs> and you know, we, you, you find something where it's like, um, Oh, the, the, when he, when he met the, when he was getting gas, I think it was the second one. He's like, Oh yeah, you go down to this street and go down to that tree. And then that's where the church is. And it's like, wow, that was extremely helpful at the time or something. Um, so, uh, it, the, the reason why I want to discuss this is like, we end up getting a lot of really great information from it, but you're obviously both a natural at it, but have also had different training on communication, you know, when you get to like hostage rescue uh, or hostage negotiator, excuse me, that, that you've done before in the past and even having to like testify in court, you have different experiences that have yeah. also built on it where I take a different approach and just because my personality is different where you're gregarious and outgoing, I'm like, everyone, please leave me alone. Like, <laughs> I mean, like exactly. it's just a little bit, a little bit different. Yeah, I like being, yeah. Yes, I believe well, that. it's like the, I like, you know, the, the, sniper reconnaissance surveillance element right, like, it's I not like an kind accent. of being hidden in the shadows yeah right. so so you know it, there, there's a couple different ways that are approach it so i, I can i want to give mine after you talk about yours but i, I for the listeners if you're you're, you're tuning in right now you know i, I want to give you some takeaways uh that you can use and the big thing is you know trying to study one style of doing anything whether you're reading about communication or leadership or something it's like look read everything that's out there, watch it, take it in. And you kind of got to find what works for you. Because if you try to do something that doesn't fit your personality, your character and who you are, it comes across as just weird, like it's odd. And, you know, because it's that time of the year and we, we're in the middle of a, a presidential race, um, we, uh, politicians are a great example because some of them have to work on that stuff. Some are more natural speakers versus than others. And and you'll see when like they're being like robotic or doing too much and it, it looks odd because it's not their personality. But some PR person told them like, hey, you got to do this more, right. move your arms this way. And it's just so unnatural and it looks weird. So we, we've seen that stuff before, but I, I just because it's so relevant right now you can kind of see that where some are better speakers than others but i want to go to you greg and first i kind of want to ask you you know why you do this why do you go uh talk to everyone and we'll get into then kind of how after that but you know i think back was this something like you kind of always did as a kid and then you honed it as you got older or, or what is it about that 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 the why you do that yeah so first of all great topic great question the uh, smoke and mirrors are going to part this morning and we're going to get a look and, and see that Oz is actually a guy from 
you know, Kansas, not, not some super magician, because you use the word natural. And this is one of the, the few times that I'll tell you, I may appear as a natural now, but it was a long road to get to where I am now. And as a kid, okay. and, and even now, you know me uh, uh, better than almost anybody that I can think of. And you know I'm an introvert. You know that I uh, would rather hole up in the, the hotel and read a book than go out and party and do all the other things. That's just not me. But I love our recon. I love our pre-deployment site surveys. I love those because it gets me in that Jeopardy mindset of what is St. Louis. Uh, I love that. You know, I, I remember Secrets of the Jeopardy Champions. We're going around the house now. Secrets of the Jeopardy Champions was yeah. one of the first books I read about Jeopardy. And that said that the best champions on Jeopardy were well-traveled. They love traveling places, but that's not enough. You can travel places and never get out of the airport. You can travel places and never yeah. know the people or the food. And and I'll take you back. Just to, you talk about a memory and emotion link. You remember when you and I were in Frankfurt and a uh, plane was delayed and, and we literally went around trying to find absolutely everything that we could do about the culture and about the people and what was different and everything in that time before, uh, 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 yeah, you know, we had left Saudi Arabia. We had to catch the flight in Frankfurt and then coming back here. And we did, we used that time. We were exhausted. We were filthy. We were trying to get on a plane, but we said, okay, now it's time for the street interviews. Now it's time for the, hey, uh, you know, what's with the gummy bears? And did you know that a Smurf was called a Schlumpf in Germany? That's the kind of shit that keeps me going because you never know where in that you will find that gem. And you brought that up as well. That was genius for doing that. But as an introvert, you have to literally force yourself. To, I, I read a book when I was younger uh, from G. Gordon Liddy called Will. And, and uh, Liddy was afraid of thunderstorms and lightning, so he lashed himself to a tree in his yard during a thunderstorm. Uh, he was afraid of the rats in the basement, uh, so he went down and took a broom handle and beat a rat to death after cornering it and then cooked it and ate it. Uh, now, that's oh, extreme, geez. but he overcame his introversion. You see what I'm <laughs> trying your to point. say? Yeah. <laughs> he also spent time in prison uh, uh, and yeah. created the Watergate scandal. <laughs> but other than those things, right, you, know, you got to balance, right? But so, so being a natural, my thing was, one, watch my dad. My dad was a Marine and led into every room with his chest and his head. You know, here I come. Here comes a Marine. What are you guys up to over there? You know, whose house is this? Who do I talk to? Who's the? And my dad used to give me the little tidbits, too. He was like, if you just walk in and just start talking to people, that's not enough. You got to figure out who the right person to talk to is. Who's the check writer? Who owns this place? Who's got a stake in the game? And I was like, well, why would that be important? And dad would lay it out for me. He's like, look, if a person's invested, if a person has skin in the game, then they're going to give you a real reaction to it. And if you're not a natural, if you don't feel like you're doing it, uh, 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 if, if it's not, if you're acting, they'll find you out. Because right away, yeah. they'll put their hackles up and go, okay, because what's this scam? Genuine. I've seen them. I've seen those scams before, and, right? And I mean, even, even, even when you're not even when you're not uh, are trying to like it, that, and that's why no, you're not trying to get over on it, right for you but, but exactly if you're trying to do that stuff it comes across as not natural and so like you see it as like okay that you're being disingenuous yep. the, the fix is in even though yeah. you're just trying to so, you know be a so better met, but be, be more sociable yeah exactly and you've met both of my brothers so my brother brian biggest introvert i've ever met in my entire life uh brian's uh, sport was swimming talk about being alone all the time uh brian rode a motorcycle okay Talk about being alone. No room for other passengers in there, right? Uh, uh, and uh, as cool as he was, uh, he played Red Star, White Star with Greg Daniels up in his bedroom for days at a time. Sometime they would have a cooler up there uh, uh, playing this board game that's on math and a big dice and all these other things about uh, uh, warfare. You know, and, and the idea is that you've met Jeff as well. And Jeff never wants to be in front of the camera. Jeff is always three layers back, and and he's been an executive dignitary protection for forty years, and nobody would know it meeting him because he's not yeah. that guy, you know. So, so I don't even think family, he has a website. Uh, exactly, our whole family is that uh, <laughs> Matt Black Rhino Liner subdued shit yeah. that you see, but it's not out there. So I learned early. Okay, we would go into houses in Detroit, 
in areas that were rough where the people didn't have a lot of money and have to go into basements and pour bleach so we would be able to to breathe uh, uh, fresh air and change the asbestos on a non-functioning furnace. So the first thing is the people are very skeptical. And then you're running into other people that aren't uh, in on you're there to fix the furnace. So what's going on? So you had to assuage those fears so you didn't have this high feeling of anxiety. So even as a kid, I would find out very quickly what in the environment is stuff that you can talk to. So you don't go into a a house in the inner city where you're in a basement and water up to your ankles and go, hey, you got a beautiful house or nice yard because you're going to immediately piss somebody off or sound like you're being sarcastic. So you had to pick something else. So you see tools or you see a bench or you see, uh, uh, you know, toys that are, you know, handmade or fashioned in a different way. Or you see a swing set and you go, wow, yeah, it's in really good shape. And you mention it. You go, notice the swing set on the way in. Uh, Those chains look brand new. Seemingly nothing. But the idea is that somebody worked on that. Somebody made that. Somebody took the time to fix that for somebody. And right away, you're searching for common ground. Now, you might not hit on the first one. That, that's why there's so many at-bats when you're playing baseball. If it was just the one at-bat yeah. and that was your only game that you were playing for the yeah. season, you know, so what are your stats? One. Uh, but the yeah. idea is that what you do is then you measure because we're huge on interpersonal, right? So you got to see are the chemicals firing in the brain. Did the eyes go up? Did the person show that little smirk where you see that they're smiling on it, you know? And you say, well, a chain like that wouldn't be good for a dog. And then the person goes, well, why not? Well, it looks like it'd be too heavy unless he had a big dog. Okay, that's the second thing. Now I know that they got a dog bowl that's in the corner. So I'm being aware, situational awareness, and I'm using it to break the ice so I can open lanes of communication, lanes and lines communication, break down silos, all the shit you hear all the time. But why? Why? Because it makes for a safer atmosphere. It makes it builds trust. It means that I can operate at the speed yeah. of trust. And, right? Those are important things you, to me, no actually, matter what age or location. You, you, and you and you said it too just a minute ago because I want to I want to hit on that real quick. Is that mm. you know it, it's it's sort of this finding uh, common ground, and so it's now now we're not at an adversarial relationship or a right. power dynamic relationship. We're we're pointing to something over there, and we're discussing that. So so we can sort of come together. We can be neutral about that, or or yep. we can agree on something. It's it, it, this is why some people are like, oh, I hate just small talk and blah blah. I was like, no. You're supposed to talk to someone about the weather and and how the rain is doing this. Like that's finding common ground so that you can have the next step of the conversation. You can do this. I mean, same thing with like, with, uh, um, you know, uh, it's what, because what I used to do too, is even, especially like in the middle East and stuff like that, is like always have, you know, cigarettes on me because smokers are, are social people. And so it'd be something now we're doing something together. Now we're having a cigarette. Well, now we're, we're, we're engaged in the same we're different than so, everything else, except this, we share so, this. Exactly. You're right. Yeah, sorry. So go, go back to that. But, but like, I, I just want to highlight that is what it is, is that common ground or that common theme or something we can touch. Yeah. Very important point. So let me show you how different that is. So you and I spend a lot of time at rental car places and hotels and places where they want to get you in and get you out. I don't have time. I've heard it all before yeah. everybody. So when I walk in, I'll just, folks, I'll give you one for free. It's a Gregism. So I'll walk into a hotel, never been at the hotel before, walk up to do the check-in, and the person says next, and I'll step up with all my shit ready because I don't want to be an ass and delay everybody. And I'll look at them and I'll say, tell me about your worst guest ever. And immediately, you'll see that person change out of what they're doing and go, guy came in with three Dobermans and they shit right on the floor or they'll start talking yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I call that fishing. So I'm fishing to see if the person's open to a conversation. Now if they shut me down and say something like, "Oh, I couldn't tell you that." Then I'll change it to humor. Boom, I fire on the next like a rotor in a car. Pop 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 pop. The spark is firing to catch the gas, right? To get that internal combustion. So the next one will be, "Well, I might just be that guest, so you might want to share that with me." Now I get a little bit of a laughter or something else and they go, "Okay, I got it." So you're not sure where that's going. Look, when I would go on police calls, the same thing. The people called because they don't know what to do. So if you just show up with the problem-solving attitude and you don't engage in the small talk right away, they get the feeling you're on the clock, staring at your watch, ready to go. Yeah. Same with the car rental. So, hey, uh, is it okay? Do you guys take a 
a two-party out-of-state check with no ID. And then right away, the person stops for a minute and looks yeah. at you. Kidding, kidding. Hey, listen, is there any upgrades that we could get today for free? And now what you're doing is you're talking. You're not scamming anybody. You know me. I don't give a shit if they're giving something back. I just like having them smiling. And we leave. They know my name. I know theirs. And the next time we show up, it's like Larry. And they're going, hey, man, guess what we did? And I love that. So, so I need to check the atmospherics. And the best way to check the atmospherics, yeah. which gets me into the geographics, is to go first for the biometrics. What is it that I can share with this person? while we're talking, okay, that heuristic template match or prototypical match that I can build with you in the first couple of seconds that we meet. Most people make their decision on you in instant, uh, uh, which means an so, instant for me is one yeah. to 10 seconds. Yeah. So, so w w here, here's how I would explain that. Like if I'm yeah. watching this interaction and I'm narrating to the, to the audience here, right. And, and I, and I've seen you do that. The, the, the two, two party out of state check always gets an eyebrow raise. Cause they're like, mm -hmm. Oh God, here they do the, or, or the eye we go. where they go, yep. they go, here we go. I've seen this before. What's this, right. you know, asshole story that he's going to give me and why he can't, why he doesn't have exactly. a credit card for me to hold the room with or something. Right. Exactly. But, but so, so what, what, you know, th this goes back to, you know, when you're doing that, it's like, you know, kind of the analogy we give about throwing the rock in the pond, seeing where the ripples go out, but you're, you're, you're basically sampling the baseline, right? So you're yes. taking the temperature and it's not to get, if I, I don't want to go in going, Hey, well, I got to get this person talking to me. It's like, no, I got to get this person talking i gotta get this person on common ground i need to yep. i need to i need to get them on the first step of the stairs that we're about to walk up that's it i don't need them to go hey check out this staircase we're about to walk up it's like no and this goes back to that sort of small talk but if you make it a little bit more personal because you didn't just go man the uh, weather down here in texas is really kicking today you know you you, you use exactly. humor as a tool because you know it everyone has some sort of sense of humor like every every human being you know and we all laugh at the same shit so it's really just to find that common ground that element and then allows you to sort of take the temperature of where this person's at and yeah. in because the, the follow on interaction you know we've dealt with it where you can tell we're right when we walk in and we're going to check into a hotel and it's such a great example because customer service gets really tough and you know that person you can tell like they've been dealing with this person for a while now who's giving them some problem about their room yep. or this or that and you know they're they're done their cup is full it's the end of their shift they've been there all day they've got and you can just tell so anytime we ease that tension and intervene or you know for for us it's like you know it, it one it's uh people are always thankful for it, right? Because it helps them get through their day. And then it may help us, like you said, get that room upgrade or those extra bottles of water or some snacks from the set. I mean, like it's, it's just about, and it's just being a good human being, but what we really do is there's some information gathering purposes in that as well too. So, so, and so good, let's stick because you brought up the hotel thing and checking in like what, why else do I want to do that other than just being a decent human being, which we have to remind people to be a decent fucking human being. <laughs> like what, what else, what else am I getting out of that? Stay with us. We'll be right back. What you do in this moment matters. Join us for the upstander ripple effect podcast for stories of people using their character strengths to be the best of humanity today. Hear from the son of Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel, who reflects on his father's life and legacy. And from a Catholic nun who forged a friendship with the father of Anne Frank. Both will leave you inspired to start your own ripple of change. Download the Upstander Ripple Effect podcast today. So, so I wrote down a couple of comments because you always come up with these great uh, uh, side uh, spirals. And, and one is you're talking about, you know, uh, we're filling in that baseline and comparing things against the baseline. Folks, on your way to the restaurant, you're building the baseline. On your way through yeah. the parking lot, you're refining you and adding things. So, yeah. Right. So the idea is by the time I'm engaging with somebody at the restaurant, I've got a whole lot of stuff that I can do. So restaurant, Target, 7-Eleven, gosh damn hotel, rental car place, wherever you're going to go, muffler place because you got to get your oil changed, whatever it is. So Brian and I were in Atlantic City, and on the way into the hotel, we were probably a couple of miles from the hotel. I started looking for the worst gosh damn crap hole in Atlantic City that I could find and memorizing the name. 
And then we came up, and as I was engaging in small talk with the person behind the counter, I looked at who obviously was the security, and I stopped what I was doing, and I looked, and I said, hey, we're thinking about going to Mondo's uh, uh, tonight for dinner. Is that a great choice? Knowing full well that the place yeah. is half burned down. You remember the yeah. people are out in front. The cars are up on jack and everything. And the guy goes, holy crap, no, you can't go down there. You got to go. What did I do? I played into his suit. So that's just like a game of cards. I got to figure out what other people are holding and how I can get them to show me whether that's going to be a good bet. Should I stay on or get off, Brian? And and so the other thing <clears throat> is you made a, a, a comment about testing the water. Look, uh, as a swimmer, I was a swimmer too, ran in a family, I guess. As a swimmer, the thing you had to do in the morning, because you were going to put on a lot of miles before a swim meet, is you had to go to the water and jump in. You never tested the water. You never reached down and hit the water because it was always cold and there was always too much chlorine. So you, you got used to being just uncomfortable, as you would say, you know, uh, sucking it up. And, and uh, if you would do the toe, then it would take the foot and then you're doing the ankle. And now it's 45 minutes later and you're up to your waist going, oh, you know, uh, so you got to just jump right in. But it's exactly the opposite with communication. What you got to do is you got to breach that threshold and not be afraid to try but you got to try a little bit slowly. Don't come in with a a zinger right away. Hey, what's with the fucking hair? There's ghosts in this place. You don't want to come in like that. You're not checking (laughs) green. You get what I'm trying to say? Because if you're off-putting, you know, I mean, there's an environment for that. If it's open mic night and I'm at the bar and I want to drink, you know what I'm saying? That's completely different. I'll give you one more very quickly as we're narrowing down on what this might feel like with baselines. So I went and got my hair cut. Look at this. I actually get this cut. And and if I could find a flow B, I'd buy it and do it myself. You remember the flow B glove with yeah, the vacuum? The okay. suck cut. Uh, uh, yeah, the set, exactly. There's that another sure reference. Uh, that's the second one. And that was from uh, Wayne's World 1, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, sitting there waiting for my haircut. And you know I arrive 20 minutes early for every appointment, no matter what. So I can get the lay of the land and shit. People, you don't have to do that. 10 minutes is enough. Uh, but as I'm watching, this woman uh, uh, is getting her haircut in front of me. And She's looking in the mirror as the lady says, okay, we're done. In other words, pay me and go. And she looks and holds her hair and goes, I just, you know, maybe a little more here. And I'm like looking at it and it's minutia, man. It's shit. And so the woman cuts and comes and cuts and comes. And then she looks and she goes, maybe right in here. And so she goes back, Brian, this took the whole 20 minutes that I was early going back and forth on this little bitty shit that only that woman knew. And then she finally paid and left. And what about the next appointment? All the small talk. So I'm up next. I jump into the chair. And the first thing I do is look in the mirror and I go, somewhere right in here. And she burst out laughing. Why? Because I used her discomfort, the uncomfortable nature, yeah. to break the ice and go, I too understand what just happened. I'm, I have no idea how you got the patience. You know? and, and then the next thing I would say to a person like that, hey, you're on your feet all day. I'm on my feet all day. What's the secret with socks? Oh, you see what I'm trying to say? So yeah. I'm fishing again. I'm fishing. What is it that this person is going to like to talk about? Because if not, one, uncomfortable silence gets us nowhere. Okay. And at the end of the day, what I might learn inside that place could help me in future barber shops, or it could help me in the parking lot, uh, de-escalate a situation that I'm going to get into. That's not your property or where, you know, your car or your dog. You never know. Do people ever get shot? Uh, 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 doing something stupid that you'd go, there's no way somebody gets shot. Look at road rage. So I don't want that. So every interaction, I try to control the pace of that interaction by opening up that door, you know, letting yeah. off that steam valve a little bit. Right. And, 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 and so this is a, this is a good point to bring up because you're, you're sort of getting into like how you do this and you give mm-hmm. some good examples and playing into what that person's sort of role is. So like you going up to the security guard, and asking about that place that's not safe. Okay, he is the security guard, so he is a protector. So he's going to go, "Hey, man, no, don't do that." Like, you know, yep. what I mean, you're playing into that that role that they're playing. Whether it doesn't matter what the person is, you know, how good they are at their job or what they think. You know, you're you're using the environment and what they what you should expect to see. Now, someone can be like, "Yeah, man, go there, whatever. I don't care." That's that's different, right? But but you you now get that, like, because you had yes. more information going into that conversation than that person did. So, right. uh, it, and it's the same thing with, with the with the the customer service, right? It, it, check out a hotel server, whatever it is where you're in, engaging with customers. Like that's part of your job, so you do. But um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. I sorry, agree. my my camera came unplugged somehow, but we can keep going. It'll it'll fix itself in a second, I think. Um, 
I actually oh, don't notice the um, difference. That little eight ball looks exactly but, like you. <laughs> but but uh, what yeah. you're what you're sort of getting into is is sort of the 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 how uh, to do it, and and based on sort of like you, you, this is where it gets into based on your personality in a sense. And for example, like I am much more sort of introverted, not as outgoing and stuff, but I also want to kind of throw a rock in the pond and test things out. So it's it's, it's sort of playing to yes. who you are. Like you use a ton of self-deprecating humor. It, it's 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 a way I for do. now to make you sort of the the object or, or of the do. joke, you know, rather than making that person like the object of the joke in a sense because it it it, it relieves tension. Well, the, yeah. and that's what I mean. I don't so, want to make so, them so feel you, you take that right? on you and you all, all the time. Yeah. So like yeah. how like what what have you found in in sort of a process because you talked about it from being a kid and you know um it, what you can uh, um sorry, this thing is giving me some trouble, but um, you, you talked about from being a kid and going through dad on HVAC runs to all the way up to then you did like your hostage negotiator. Now you're just doing it, yeah. testing the waters and doing situational awareness. So yep. what, what did you find in terms of like a process on, on how to do that? I mean, that that's a lifetime of, of learning and doing it, but like, how did you find, you obviously found um, patterns in what works in all of these different situations. So what were those sort of patterns or what were those things about people that you think you're hitting on that, that, that really helped relieve the tension or open up the conversation where it was otherwise would have been closed off. Like what, what gets that, that door open when it's, when the, when the AC is kicking and it's kind of hard to pull a little bit, you know, what, what's the thing, what's, what's the, what's the negative air machine that I need to put on there? Um, since we're, we're on a, we're on an HVAC topic. So I guess I'll just stick with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So all references today. No. So uh, let's, Let's always think of the least intervention and the least objectionable outcome. And you're back, by the way. And what I mean by that, for example, uh, I was a really good cop. I love being a cop. I miss it every single day. And the reason I love it is because I was at the top of my game. I could do no wrong, and I enjoyed the shit out of that. Uh, and one thing that I would do is I would love busting bad guys. So even though I worked on midnights and I would be running into bad guys all night long, I would get a chance to switch and do a day shift because we were going to a wedding or something or do an afternoon shift. And I would see lawn care crews out there. I would always pull over with a bunch of donuts and a bunch of coffee for the lawn care crew. The boss never minded that five minutes of their people, the same thing with carpenters that were working. And people would say, why do you do that? Well, here's one thing. When do carpenters work? When are they pounding nails? When do lawn care people work? They don't work at dusk. They don't work after dark. Okay. So that means that they're up in that neighborhood at an elevated position or somewhere yeah. that nobody no. pays attention. Nobody pays attention to a guy mowing a lawn or using a, a, a blower. So while they're there conducting surveillance and doing ISR before a bank robbery or to do a burglary, okay, who's watching them? The people yeah. in that neighborhood. So if you got a dog walking service that's walking three or four dogs with the T-shirts, I'll always stop and talk to them. I'll bring them a breakfast burrito. Hey, I work this area. What did you see? What, what are the cars that are parked? Well, I'll tell you what. People over there, they're always parked there because they're making out. That's a meet me, eat me. People over there, they're always parked there because they're smoking the hashish or whatever it is, Brian. But they saw things. And remember, when you look at them, you don't see them. Because you're driving through the area and you're mission focused on I'm setting up for this raid or I'm setting up for this uh, arrest warrant service or uh, a search warrant or I'm uh, you know going to rob this bank. So you're so into that moment that you're looking for what? You're looking for coppers, visible signs of authority, a way to get out of there. The Hey, that 7-Eleven is closer to the freeway than this one. There's my exit strategy. So that guy washing windows in an elevated position during yep. the day, everybody tunes him up. So that's my source of information. So now I conduct street interviews with those people, which takes going up and going, hey, I got to either flash the tent or go, hey, I'm new to this area. Or, hey, uh, you just got a, the weirdest question you've probably ever been asked. What's the worst thing that happened? Now you've got that dialogue going. But, Brian, I'm using that information to create a more stalwart, a more uh, 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 fidelity-filled baseline for my next contact. Do you understand that every contact is – uh, uh, like dominoes. They're setting up so I can knock down that next contact. Now I've got some insider information. Man, that was a long flight. What did I just do? I just put the idea. I primed you to say, hey, where'd you come from? 
Okay, now we're talking. So I set you up so, you know, I, I got my luggage. I'm coming up. I'm fishing for my ID. You get what I'm trying to say? And I go, world's longest flight. I've interested you in something that's going on. So you have to have a panoply of strategies. You can't go with just one. And you also have to be able to read the room. So just like we don't, uh, I, I remember Brian and I one time were down in Texas teaching. And when we down, uh, got down to, to Texas, uh, my flights were late and I came in late and stuff. And so I did uh, a joke on day two that would have been perfect on day one. But the folks in the room didn't know me for that first day. And so they all looked at me and you, crossed their arms. You had to, you had to dig yourself out and stuff. Out and I had to go, whoa. We already had the again, rapport right? going. And you try to come in off the top rope. They're like, who's this guy? Well, you weren't here I yesterday did. when we all became exactly. blood brothers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Exactly. We know these guys, but we don't know you. You, know, you didn't sweat with us. We didn't have lunch together. So the idea is the same exact thing. Now, now look, when you're paid to put on a concert, People are there in the seats for you to come out and entertain. That's not what you're doing here. What you're doing is you're talking about a taxi driver or you're talking about the person that's bagging your groceries. Like, for example, always give the side eye when a person comes up. Like nowadays, trying to find a place that bags your groceries or actually checks you out. Okay. Those were things that made us human. Those were things that allowed us to interact with the world around us. And we don't do that anymore. So always make sure that as you're first coming in or halfway through your shopping or something, you look at the lane that you're likely to go to and memorize names. So when you come up, I just did it at a doctor's appointment. Knew the kid at the counter that opened the glass. His name was Carl. It's a small town, 10 feet away. So there's no way I could have read his nameplate. I go, good morning, Carl. How's your day? Okay, do you think that that de-escalates the situation? That opens all kinds of doors. Wow, I'm supposed to know this guy. He clearly knows me. What's going on here? And when you see that smile or when you see that nod, now you know we got something. I've showed up on calls where cops are surrounding people and they've got every form of less lethal out and one person's ready with the lethal and they're circling and that person's turning and it's ready to go sideways. It's shit sandwich with the shit being lit on fire. And and I go to somebody, hey, uh, not to interrupt, what's going on here? Hey, man, this guy ain't listening to anybody. And Father Flanagan would come out. I would reach into my bag of tricks and I'd come out and, oh, what are we doing, son? I'd right. go right back to going my way. Uh, with Bing Crosby and and channel that old uh, Irish priest, you know, and I would go like, hey, take a look around you real quick. It's about to be Humpty Dumpty. You're going to get the Thumpty. What is it I can do or say to get inside your head and not have this happen? Well, I'm not afraid of anybody. Are you afraid of me? You're not afraid of me? Yeah, Tell me why you're not afraid out. of anybody. Yeah. Guess what we're doing, Brian? We're talking. We're not beaten. You know, and, and the, the, the idea is the more I can get you to talk, even when you're agitated or pissed off, the less you're using your fists and feet and fighting me. But I, going back to the first sentence you used today on the call, can't be adversarial. If I come in adversarial, if that's where I'm going to go, and you're not paying to yeah, see me and, at a comedy and club, the problem we might is have problem. too is sometimes the environment sort of sets it up almost an adversarial or or not necessarily adversarial, but there's like one person in power, the other person has none kind of role. And and you see this a lot when people get upset, like yep. you, airports are perfect because you get the gate agent, yes. their job they're doing, you people coming up and, and doing stuff and asking all kinds of questions. And it's like everyone's first time flying, like they forgot how to do anything, right? It, it, these are just kind of stressful situations in general, but be, exactly. because the environment is set up that way, it, it, it's almost... You, you, you start from that um, kind of adversarial, I'm on my side, you're on behind the, the, the desk here where I'm not allowed back and you're the one in charge and I have nothing. So people get kind of like, they, they sort of feel a little threatened by that sometimes too. So, I, and I'm sort of just taking from the other perspective too, someone walking yep. up and, and asking a question and being, being approachable and allowing people to come up to you, right? Everyone talks about there's different ways to do that and yep. to, to look in a manner where no one wants to bother you, um, you know, or, or, or set up. And, and sometimes we'll do that with people. That's I won't get into that on the show when we're, when we're trying to throw a rock in the pond where someone's clearly putting up barriers and then we go right. drop right down in the middle of them to, to break those. But it kind of remind me yep. of, of a here comes that yellow smoke, man. Yeah. Well, here's yeah. there, there's a couple one. There's one I, I saw. It's actually is pretty funny. He's just, uh, I think he's a comedian or whatever, but I saw it on social media clips, but he, he walks up to the gate agents and he's recording it. And, you know, from the side when he's got the microphone on so you can hear the conversation and he walks up, he's like, Hey, you know, I'm so-and-so I'm in seat, you know, 33 F whatever. I'm, I'm traveling with my wife and we're not seated together. Um, but you know, she 
is I'm, I'm supposed to be up here asking you if you can seat us together, but I actually don't want to sit next to my wife. So I'm just having this conversation <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. Right. So now they're so uncomfortable and they're kind of right. like laughing, but it's that nervous laughter, but it, it's, it's just like, it's, it's breaking the ice. Yep. And the, the other one I, I saw really, we remember when we were at, um, we were at a uh, uh, school and we had this kid come up who was kind of just an odd kid and he turned out to be a real odd kid, but he was a great guy. And, and, you know, and there's a mix of these students and, and law enforcement officers in there. And so there's these two guys that were like, you know, had been cops for a long time, big SWAT dudes, like shaved head muscles everywhere, just kind of sat down because it was before the class started. And this kid was sitting by himself and we just see him get up go over and just plop right down in front of these guys and just have this, just start talking to them. And you could tell they're kind of like hadn't had their coffee yet. And they're just like, okay, but they're trying to be friendly and nice. And they were like a little annoyed, but you know, what we learned is we found out from that, that guy, we had him on the podcast, Austin. Uh, and, and he, basically because of his issues and social issues and sitting in his mom's basement forever, he realized he had to make a change. So he started going out because he was terrible at like social interaction. So he did the G Gordon Liddy, like you're talking about. He just forced himself. He went to a mall and he goes, well, why don't I go to these old people? Because they're not threatening. They're, they have no one to talk to. So they probably want to talk. They're here in public. And he would sit down and just try to have conversations with people. And like, so it was his own like personal development that he did, but it was such it, when you see that stuff happen, it was so powerful when we got the whole backstory, because I'm like, what is this kid doing? Like, how, how does he just walk up and plop down next to these two jack dudes with guns who he doesn't know yep. at all? And I mean, yep. it, it, it can take kind of a lot, but because of who he is and how he looks and his affect and how he approaches it, it's completely non-threatening. Like it's, it's, it's in fact, right. it's almost like, Oh God, I got to talk to this little kid. You know what I mean? But, but that's, that's good. Right. Because and you're that, smiling think, going, what's this? Yeah, be, because that, what's that, happening next now year. I have some empathy yeah, for him. Now I'm starting to see it through his perspective. Now it's like, okay, right. it's, this is, this is harmless. And that, that approach, um, uh, kind of, kind of works. So, you, you know, the, the kind of next thing I w- want to get into, cause we're, we're talking about really just easing tensions. This is de-escalation is what you're talking about and get, you know, there's, yes. there's benefits. Everyone psychological benefits. de-escalation. Like, Everyone yeah. benefits from that. That person who's had a long day, you benefit it from some way. The other people do. It lightens tensions. It's just easier yep. when we're all laughing, having a good time, right? Um, so, so it's like sort of establishing and finding this common ground. And you know, the other yep. thing we, we kind of want to get into is that that also really determines the baseline for the situation. It determines. It gives me a comparison point because now I know if someone is still even though you're trying and it's obvious you're trying to sort of ease the tension or have a conversation and they're yeah. still putting up barriers or they are, are, you know, back and we're not going along with it. Now that also gives me some insight into that person and maybe their intent. So, so how, yeah. how, how do I, how do I do that? Or what can I glean from that from people who don't want to go along then or continue to say almost no, no, argue? So you, you get what I'm saying? So now it's almost like it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. sort of not as, it's not escalating a little bit, but it's helping me really define the situation and what I can glean from it. First of all, for everybody listening, write this down. This works just as well on a phone call. A phone call is a non-text verbal interchange over mm-hmm. your thing that you carry in your hand. Most people don't make phone calls anymore. Mm-hmm. We make a lot. And yeah. during a phone call, not a Zoom, an actual phone call, you can do these same skills. Second, okay, you've been with me at a thousand hotels, most of those for work. Uh, uh, And on the way out, when we're going shopping for class the next day, or when we're going to dinner, uh, I always ask the person working the counter the same thing. Hey, Brian and I are going out to dinner. Can I bring you anything? And I say it just like I did. So it's very genuine because I would actually get them something or bring them something from the store if they need it. Cause I've been in that position. I know what it's like working, you know, midnight shift, having to watch the phones from two to three or whatever the hell it was. And that's a great icebreaker. That's a great way to get that person uh, 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 involved in a conversation. And then they recognize you when you come back in and don't say, may I help you when you've been staying at the hotel for three days. Second thing is you can pull off a character and it's okay to be afraid. I'll give you an example. There's Father Flanagan. That's one of my characters. There's also Peter Falk and Columbo. 
where I go, well, I just don't see that this stuff is not adding up here. Uh, help me understand what I'm doing wrong or what I can do to, to fix this situation. I'm in. we go to places and the car is not there. We go to places and it's the wrong hotel room. Uh, uh, we go to places where they booked us in Columbus, Ohio, and we're in Columbus, Georgia. So now all of a sudden that person at the counter doesn't give a shit. They got nine people standing in line behind you. How do I get on your, Hey, listen, first, I want to tell you, thanks for what you're doing today. I know this can't be easy for you. Uh, second, you got to be a way that we can figure this out together. Help me help you. How do we solve that problem? When you're there, rather than tapping your foot and being agitated and placing blame on somebody that doesn't need the blame, you're more apt, you're more likely to get what it is you want. If I come up and I go, this is fucking ridiculous. Get me a supervisor. What did I just do? I just elevated the conversation to a to a place uh, that might be unattainable later. I might have reached the threshold with this person in front of me, and then the next thing is fisticuffs. So psychological or verbal uh, 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 de-escalation. Uh, you know, I remember reading all the books I had to, to get certified in the state of Colorado. And they were all about the you know meat eaters and plant eaters and this and that. And I never found any of that shit helpful. What I found helpful is reading the environment before you open your mouth. Then once you, it's okay to be a little bit afraid, open your mouth, commit. When you commit to something, if the person doesn't, Brian's exactly right. If you're not meeting me halfway, there's got to be a reason why. And that could be either you're the wrong person, you have some physical or mental uh, 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 difference in your character that's not allowing you to be at that level, which is okay too. That, that doesn't mean you're going to be a classic obstructionist. Or you are an obstructionist. Uh, this happens a lot when we're HR or coppers or uh, uh, in a command role, let's say that you're in a leadership position and you encounter somebody that's bristled already and they don't want to talk to you. Well, then explain to them, we're never going to get anywhere if you don't tell me what's going on. What's the issue here? Don't say what's wrong because that intones wrong, you know? And, yeah. and don't say, well, uh, like uh, I've seen people come up and go, well, you're acting like a complete asshole. Tell me, you know, or coming up and saying, calm down. Brian, how well does that work? Oh, yeah. You might as well yeah. have a gas can, you know, and a, and a road flare uh, to throw at somebody. So the idea is to start small in a rehearsal at your local 7-Eleven at a gas station at some place that's close to your house and go in there three times this week and buy something, buy a pack of gum. And the third time, okay, first two times I haven't said anything, just watch and listen. Third time, third time that week that I buy a pack of gum, Look at the person and go, how many packs of gum have I bought this week? And the person goes, what? And you go, I'm the same guy every other day, and I'm going to be here in two days to buy another pack. Leave it at that. Then two days later, come back and go, guess what I'm here for? That's right. I'm here to buy the pack of gum. What I'm doing, Brian, is I'm building that trust by creating a little bit of inroad, and I can't build the whole gosh damn aqueduct on that yeah. first day. I've got to take it slow, you know? And people are going to go, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, that's why you're in the fix you're in. And, and the barrier to entry here is this. If I'm so focused on this that I can't look phone. you in the eye and sense you on your phone and, and I can't look at like, Brian, uh, uh, you know how old this jacket is and I still wear it. Uh, I still have the brown one. I wear that. that. That's not accidental. That's to get inside of your head. I, I have my shirt untucked. That's to create a persona that you have an expectation of so I can build on that when I'm creating or, or uh, bouncing something off, testing the baseline. So those are intentional. When I fly, I wear my flying outfit. When we teach, I wear my teaching outfit. None of that is accidental. And I think the people listening to the podcast should try that. And you're going, yeah, but I wear a uniform every day. Yeah, but is there a special pin or a special thing you say or the type of pen you hold? Uh, Saudi Arabia, all the men have to wear exactly the same clothing. So what do they specialize in? the pen that's in their pocket. Yeah. Every pen is different and it defines you. So you can find what defines you as well. And, and maybe it's religious. Maybe you say, have a blessed day at the end of every contract or praise God in between your sentences. doesn't matter what it is, Brian, but being consistent in that, then people recognize you when they see you again, or they go, oh, I know this guy, he's harmless. And that's an important standard too. The escalation is a two-way street. I have to lead you to want to uh, uh, de-escalate with me and lower the anxiety level in the room. Yeah. And, and, uh, there's, there's sort of 
different different methods and um you know i go back to kind of what i was what I was talking about at the beginning of everyone's sort of you know personality and character is a little bit different so you sort of have to um find what what works for you or or create something where you know like you you, you gave the example of like i'll untuck one part of my shirt i'll drop some of my stuff i'll yep. kind of be the big buffoon um, as, as sort of a disarming technique, you do that. Cause also you're like, you're, you're a big guy and you come across can, can come across as intimidating. Exactly. I don't want to get punched in the face at every time I meet somebody. And, and you, exactly you, you, right. you don't, you don't want to start that off. So it's almost like, uh, you're creating, um, you're creating, like you said, that the persona, that character, and, and you're, you're also kind of interrupting their, um, natural tendency to put you in a certain category or a box or something like yes. that. Right. So, so I'm creating a little bit of cognitive dissonance on there so that it, it forces that person to take an extra second or minute or whatever to, to look at your situation yep. differently or not categorize you as, oh, here's some guy just coming up complaining again or something like that, you know, yep. in, in, in coming across genuinely that way. But, you know, like you said, if, you, if you're if you trying to trying to do too much or you're being robotic, it's not going to come across as genuine. And now they think that you're you're up to something. And and so this is yep. when when, you know, you, you, you brought up some examples of like buying the pack of gum or going in there. These are small things, you know, you can do and, and sort of practice in a sense. You can get everyone can get better at it. And and it is harder because you brought up I do want to get into that, that you brought up the the cell phone, right? Is everyone staring at it? And, you know, it's like oh, these people all talking about situational awareness and stuff all the time. Like it's it's way easier now than it ever has been my entire life to to find out who's doing what and who's up to no good it's so much easier because everyone is just glued to your phone so if you're not um you know why you you have a little bit higher level of organization you or you're you're actually situationally right. where there's only a few types of people that are so it, it, in some ways it's easier but but what that's done is also like we we, it, it's created sort of this zombie effect with everyone where we're just so used to, you know, we've created it, not just because they're designed that way to keep us on there longer, but literally then we start building habits of how often we're on our phone and what we're looking at and all that. And, and so you, you kind of got to get into that other person's head and kind of do the mental etch sketch and shake it up a little bit. Right. You have to like get, get that, yes. their attention because there's so much competing for it. And that initial thing, cause you bring up, this is, this is a great one to show the sort of generational difference. Like some of the things you're talking about, someone younger is like, I don't want to do that. Or oh, that's cringe or uh, that's, that's weird. Or that's, different. it's like, no, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's you, you may find it weird, but that doesn't mean it actually is. Or what I, w w that person is lacking in those areas of, of communicating and used to like, yep. not used to looking at people in the eye all the time. Well, I can take that into account and go, you know, I can use that then, right? So if I know that's a difference, or I know that you're uncomfortable with that, well, that's that's something also I can use to help, you know, kind of lower the uh, yep. tension in the situation or make it less, um, you know, make it less awkward or something. And and these are things that that you you kind of got to practice. So like, because personally, me, I'm I'm definitely more would introverted um you know i don't just constantly i'm not con i mean yes all humans are constantly on transmit but i'm not super social when i'm out in public because i have things that i'm trying to accomplish or do so you know to to get outside of that comfort zone like those are all things that i used to have to do and force myself to do right even when it came to like teaching or something i mean I had my own style or I was very yep. comfortable with certain things but then i kind of kind of learned like all right well if i really want to get in the heads of people, if I really want to make this dynamic, I have to practice these few things. And so just taking them one step at a time, you learn what happens is your own style comes from that then, right? Once you push out of that comfort zone and getting in and, and just chatting with people and having those seemingly mundane conversations, um, I don't find them to be mundane conversations at all. Um, in, in fact, if, if someone is talking to you and they're bringing up stuff and, oh, the weather, you know, they're, they're, what they're attempting to engage you in conversation and you know everyone kind of like is there's this like bash on just oh this small talk bs and it's like no that's what makes the world go around that's what allows us that yeah. ability to, <clears throat> to converse with people we've never met because everyone can talk about the weather and it's a 
pretty much affecting everyone the same way. So you're literally right. starting from a place of common ground. And and those small things go, they pay dividends in the long run because next thing you know, it's five minutes later and you know every piece of information about that person that you could ever want. Um, and whether or not that has value to you is different, but you know, it, it's, it's, it's helpful in those, uh, situations to look at the mundane, look at the normal, look at the typical, and then how do I kind of insert myself into that? And I, you know, looking at the environment that you're in and playing to that role that that person's playing, what is the role that, yep. that they're playing at that time and place. And what is your role, right? If I'm going to play the role of the passenger when so, I'm traveling, what else should I expect to see with that role? And I can use that because it's, it's a legitimate place to come from. And, you know, maybe I'm just trying to get a seat upgrade, but I got to start somewhere. I can't just walk up to the gate agent and go, Hey, I'd love to get bumped up to first class. Like that's it's just not going to go well. So maybe I have to approach it, you know, in a way. Yep. So if, if I just make it methodical, like you can figure out what works best for you and your personality and all these things. We, we sort of, you know, we, especially now with social media, everyone diagnoses themselves with all kinds of different things that is half of them are fucking bullshit anyway. And half of them don't even apply to that. And uh, the other half rarely apply to that individual. But then we, we start to become that person. We go, oh, this is my issue. I have social anxiety. So now you start doing things, acting as if you're the person with social anxiety where you, maybe you really don't. You get what I'm saying is like, we come up with these own yeah, sort of faulty attributions to our personality or behavior, because I saw yeah. a really interesting YouTube short on it. And that's me. That's totally me. So it kind of corrupts the way yeah. we look at things. And and that's why we go back to all this stuff is just normal, typical behavior. And that's the important stuff to look at. No, even more important. Mm -hmm. And Brian, spot on everything that he's saying is spot on. Let's go back to what you said. People are constantly on transmit. My haircut, my jacket, the 25-year-old shirt that I'm wearing today, all of the things, my shoes, uh, the fact that I've got them off because my gosh damn feet are hurting, uh, all of those are telling a story. So my clothes tell a story, my haircut, uh, my breath, whether I brush my teeth, the glasses I choose, or whether I'm you know, uh, wearing cardboard uh, lenses uh, you know, with uh, plastic sheets in them. The cats I choose, the car I drive, the color of the car I drive, uh, uh, the things on the porch at my house, they're all screaming to me. That's you. You're trying to tell me about you and the choice that you make and the things that you like because you want to tell your story because you're human and, and your ego whatever you want to call it, your insides make you want to be friendly uh, because you don't thrive or survive if you're a loner. And, and if you're way out there on your own, there's so many things that we could go into the psychological problems and uh, uh, mental issues, the physical issues and all that other stuff of not uh, being around people. And it's fine. It doesn't make you, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that you're an outcast, but, uh, but a loner is a very, very specific type of uh, a personality trait. But if you're constantly on transmit, then I want to hear your story. That's the difference. I remember, uh, uh, folks, you got to understand that, like, I've been teaching for so long now, and I'm always teaching with people that are at the top of their game. So I've got the senior master chief dive bubble expert on all bombs in the entire world. And I've got to teach him how to get out in front of people and do this course of instruction, this little period, this three slide thing. And they're out there going, well, I'm a quiet professional and I, you know, can't get down to your level. Well, then you're never going to connect with anybody. You might be the best at something, but if you can't, you remember the guy, uh, uh, Ross, that did the paintings and he showed you how to yeah. do the paintings? Knowing full well, you'd never make your yeah. shit look like him, <laughs> yeah. but he still was, what was he? Brian, he was transparent and he was vulnerable. He went out there and showed you how to do it. So the idea is that, first of all, you got to wear your heart on your sleeve. You have to be in a motor. You have to have some level of emotions. Uh, one of my favorite shows on TV and one of my favorite stars, Jack Webb and Dragnet, uh, Just the Facts, Get Straight to It, The Fast Talking High Pants. Okay, those were great shows and they showed what this quintessential cop was like. That's not cop work at all. Those people are going to shut you up unless you're thumping a bunch of people or doing it at gunpoint all the time. You know, that, that's a different story. And, and you know, uh, uh, we look at a situation, look at the situation with the, the uh, uh, Dallas coppers that got gunned down uh, by one person during a parade. And remember the fear and the hate and the death that was going on there. Now we take a look, Democratic National Convention is on, and I heard a couple of Chicago cops uh, uh, arguing about the pro-Palestinian protesters that were outside. But there must have been a thousand of them. Yeah, but you know what? None of them were trying to kill you. 
And you know what? None of them were wearing a bomb vest and working through the crowd to get close enough to take out your mosque. That stuff happens in the world all the time. I read a, a some I don't want to use a, a disparaging remark. Somebody said, hey, we were in France and we were talking about being Christians and these guys were really mean to us. Don't they understand free speech? No, it's France. You're, what are you thinking? You, you go outside the country, you get what you expect. So inside the country, inside your own body, inside your own baseline, you have to adopt that external mindset. You have to think about what am I trying to do today? And getting through with the least amount of friction and ripples is a good thing. So opening up lines of conversation, lessening the anxiety level, being a little afraid, but trying something new. Those are great things. Why do we put people in seats at the class? Why do we force them into a color uh, uh, and say, this is your cell? We want to get them out of their comfort zone, Brian, so they're more apt to go across the street and ask those tough questions. So what, what um, do you have any examples that like typically work all the time or that you've seen that one of the, Hey, one of the easiest things to do, the lowest calorie ways to do this or to, or to talk to someone or to get information like that, or just, I'll just say, wind that back. What's the easiest way to, to establish enough of a connection or common ground to have a conversation? Have you experienced anything yeah. that like you see across the board that typically works? Yeah. So pick something that not any, everybody knows about. This is, you've heard me say it a zillion times, do your homework. So Brian brought up something just a few minutes ago about going and trying to get an upgrade on a plane. It's rarer than hen's teeth and it's not going to happen to you because loyalty programs and there's a list and there's yeah. a line and all these other things that they got to put people and it's all about pay. So if you're going to pay somebody, they're going to bump you up. But if you're not, they're not. So those are things you got to do before you get to the airport. Know that that's going to piss her off. But if you say, or him, if you say something like, hey, look, if anybody at the last minute is, you know, has a fear of flying and they bail and they got a better seat than the shitty seat I've got, please come back and get me. My name's Greg. Something like that is OK. And they'll laugh a little bit and they'll think you're half joking. But you know what? If that situation does arise, as odd as that would be, they'll say, hey, where's that fat guy? And they'll come back and talk to Greg. The thing is simple stuff. Like, for example, uh, 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 a female might take uh, uh, time on her outfit to make sure that her uh, earrings match a brooch or something. And so you can pause for just a second, look like you were going to walk by and then say, hey, uh, are those like heirlooms or did you buy them all at once? Something simple like that. Now, remember, if it's timing, there's a fire on the plane and everybody's trying to get off, not the time to play your game. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But something like the haircut. Hey, listen, I can never get my haircut to look that, that good. Uh, do you go locally or do you do it yourself? Things like that are not so personal and they're generic enough and you mean it. So you're really asking about it. Like, you know, hey, I noticed you guys went to a different color on your uniforms. How do you, how are you liking that? I like that a lot or not, you know, a uh, 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 holiday coming up. What was the weirdest thing that's happened today? Because a uh, holiday, hey, full moon last night. You know what cops say about a full moon? You have to have a line. And, and I refer to that as banter. And, and you have to have banter that builds on something that's there. So, so to, to, to be legitimate, it has to be something that's reasonable in the environment. You get what I'm trying to say? You can't come up and go, hey, you know what I'd buy if I fucking won the lottery? Okay, oh, holy shit, I didn't know there'd be a quiz. Do you get what I'm trying to say? You can't be so far afield. Uh, but saying something like, hey, today I got to wear a tie and I think I left it in my carry-on. That, that's a great thing. What did I just do? And then the person goes, well, I've got extra ties, or maybe you can buy one when you land. Now I'm talking. And once you're talking, that's the key, Brian. Once you're talking and we've got something going. If you're in a restaurant, hey, what's the most popular appetizer? I'm not going to order it. I just wondered if you knew what it was. Or what do you eat when you eat here? And then the person gives you the, oh, well, don't try the fish. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so are there any fish, uh, you know, like, is there any Atlantic cod indigenous to Missouri? Uh, you know, it's starting off with just the dumbest thing like that is sometimes a lot of fun, you know, uh, uh, and we do that to just psychologically deescalate, to open the door to later. Now, if that person just coming back and forth and grunting and throwing shit down in front of you, maybe you need to pick a new restaurant or a new waiter, uh, uh, next time that you're in there. But I do the same thing as a library. I do the same thing at a target anywhere that I go. And I'll tell you, don't forget the people that are cleaning up. Look, you might have two or three jobs and you're buffing a floor at six when I go in the morning to city market to buy my shit. Stop and tell that person, hey, that looks really good. You're doing a great job. People appreciate that. So, but 
you keep bringing it back to making it genuine. I say that if you really mean it, it's going to come off as genuine and everything. Yeah, that, that's that's true. Is 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 you know kind of talking about finding something that you could almost compliment someone on or or give them a, give yep. them you know a little 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 attaboy or or anything like that. It, it's people because you know you really get that you know it's, it's especially in those <laughs> especially if it's something customer service related they have to deal with deal with the exactly. worst people and so like those little things uh go they they end up going a long way and uh you know you, you you're you're making something personal to them but not it not it not personally invasive you're not like asking them about hey, you know is your or sexually still alive? oriented like what do you, you exactly. know you're, it's look at that ass you know yeah you, horrible. horrible tommy right? you got the and the <laughs> reason i'm saying that is brian has to strike up conversations at the clinic all the time <laughs> and i'm sure that some of those conversations are happening around you so you always have to take the moral high road while you're getting those very important test results oh Just my god saying. Yeah. So, so we, 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 um, we kind of, we, we covered a lot and, uh, you know, and start with the, the importance of it, it, you know, all of those seemingly mundane interactions are, that's yep. what situational awareness is, meaning being able to figure out that and read the temperature of the room where well, you have to do that. And then you have to test your hypothesis and you have to throw a rock in the pond and doing that in a constructive manner or a deliberate I way. Absolutely updated. Yeah. I and absolutely updated. you're, yep, you're yep. getting a feel for, for what's, what's going on. And, and those, yeah, the, the hotel ones are great. Like, you know, when you come in and it's like super dirty somewhere, it's like, Oh, great. And then it's like, well, hang on. I don't know. It's like, Hey, you guys got some construction going on. Like, yeah, they're redoing this place. It's a mess now. It's like, okay, good. There's a reason. It's not because they yep. don't care. There's something going on. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's kind of hypothesis testing and, and using, you know, just the seemingly mundane, cheesiest conversation um, is going to get you farther than trying to come up with some whiz bang question uh, where they have to give you some exact piece of information. You never know what it's going to find. You just have to yep. sort of pull pull at the strings as it as it comes along. So, um, yeah, that, so this is good. homework. We, yeah, Look we, we all around. Exactly. We, we, yeah, we, we, we covered a lot. Any uh, any kind of final words on it, Greg? No, one thing is if if you do it every day, you get better. Yeah. Point one. Point two, it's a lot of fun and it doesn't hurt anybody. Being kind and being inquisitive, those are great traits. As a matter of fact, I hope that I pass that on to my children and their children. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And don't forget that training changes behavior.